Hello, welcome to Pipeline Integrity, Things That Make Me Go Hmm. This is part four in my video series. My name is Colin Scott. I'm a Pipeline Integrity Engineer uh, based out of Calgary, Alberta, uh, up north in Canada. Today's topic is going to be Sharpie toughness correlations. Um, if you saw my previous video, number three, I talked about doing some uh, crack assessments. And I made the recommendation that the crack assessments that I was doing should not use the Sharpie over area correlation that's typically used. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to focus on why I believe the Sharpie over area correlation is really not appropriate for most conditions, even though we're using it pretty regularly uh, without a second thought. So we're going to look at three typical uh, Sharpie v-notch toughness correlations. Um, I've got these here in metrics, so some of you might be familiar with these equations but with slightly different numbers in there. Our first correlation was originally uh, derived by the NG18 committee at the Battelle Institute uh, in Columbus, Ohio back in the uh, late 60s and early 70s. And it's a very simple uh, model where uh, the Sharpie divided by the area of the Sharpie sample is correlated to uh, essentially a, a J-type integral. Um, so if we take that J and multiply it by uh, the modulus of the material, we'll get a, a K squared value. I've done all this work in K squared value because that's what we typically put into our, our log secant models. Uh, the second correlation I'm looking at is the wall and J correlation. You'll find that one in API 579 is a very common place that you'll find it. And in that case, we're looking at uh, the, the K squared is equal to a coefficient, in this case 0.74, times the Sharpie value to an exponent 1.28, and then of course, again, multiplied by the material modulus. Uh, the third correlation we're gonna look at is the Rolf-Novak correlation, which uh, again will be found in API 579, and there we have 0 0.64 times Sharpie divided by the yield strength of the material, minus a little offset, and all of that is, is multiplied out by, uh, by the yield strength squared. So those are the three toughness correlations we're gonna look at. Um, and as I said, if you're, if you're south of, of my border, you've probably got some slightly different numbers that you're going to be working with, slightly different coefficients, but for all intents and purposes, things are, are the same thing. Um, a lot of you will know the Sharpie over area correlation is the 12 Sharpie over area correlation, and that's simply an inches to foot um, you know, correction factor. So let's take a look at how this plot up. So here we've got three lines. We've got the NG18 Sharpie over area shown by red. We've got the Wall and J shown by blue, and we've got the Rolf Novak shown by green. And, well, I, we can play a game of one of these things is not like the other. Um, if you look at that, you see that the Sharpie over area correlation is about 10 times higher than the other two, which, which seems a little wonky. Now, I'm not the only person that noticed this. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the PRCI report that was put out in, I think it was March 2017, by, by Dr. Ted Anderson. Uh, he was doing crack assessments with various models, and, and in his analysis, he, uh, he came up with a similar sort of plot where he, he demonstrated that the Sharpie over area correlation is just, quite frankly, a little bit out to lunch here, or so it seems from the data. Let's see if we can uh, think a little bit more about what toughness is and how it's defined, and uh, see if we can figure out why the NG18 numbers would just be so, uh, so far away from Rollin and Rolf Novak. So if you look at toughness terminology, you'll find that toughness is typically defined for plane strain conditions. And under the plane strain conditions, the toughness is, is really low. Uh, the material is not in a position where it can yield and, it, and absorb extra fracture energy. Um, so you tend to get a low value. Um, and plane strain conditions are applicable to through wall cracks in thick wall pipe or for surface cracks in any pipe. We have to think about uh, which directions the cracks are going in and which direction the thickness of the pipe is. Toughness is, is rarely defined under plane stress conditions. If you've got plane stress conditions, you're going to have a higher apparent toughness. And the reason for that is that under those conditions, your material can yield and it can absorb a lot of fracture energy. Um, and so you're going to end up getting uh, a, a lot of a higher apparent toughness. Now, plane stress conditions are only going to be applicable to through wall cracks in thin wall pipe. That becomes very important in, in you know, my guesstimate as to what's going on with uh, the NG18 equation. So I'm going to ask a question here. 
hypothetically speaking, and this is this is just a speculation and conjecture, what if that original NG18 Sharpie data was correlated to toughness data that was actually measured under plain stress conditions rather than plain strain conditions? What if? I don't have a time machine, so I can't go back to the early 1970s to see exactly how those tests were done. Um, I've I've read a report that quotes these numbers and it, it doesn't seem to be specific on, on what's going on. So I have to ask that question. Now here are some answers that, that I've come up with. If the original NG18 Sharpie data was correlated to toughness data measured under plain stress conditions, then really strictly speaking, it would not be a true toughness values. The true toughness value should be measured under plain strain conditions. Now that's typically done using a compact tension specimen but specifically with some side grooving on that compact tension specimen. The side grooving actually forces plain strain conditions and uh, essentially embrittles the material, not allowing it to yield. Um, if you don't put in the side grooves, that allows your sample to yield if it's thin enough, and that might give you a higher apparent toughness value. Now, if that's true, then those values would be applicable to through wall cracks in thin wall pipe, but the values would really not be applicable to surface breaking cracks in any pipe. So something to chew on there. Now we can calculate a theoretical difference between toughness under plain stress conditions and plain strain conditions. In order to do that, we have to go back to our, our college uh, elasticity theory and think about the X, Y, and Z directions and stresses and strains and, and the Poisson effect and, and, and recognizing, um, recognizing the, the elasticity theory that defines how the plane stress and plane strain conditions are going to change. And what we find is there's a 1 minus 2 nu squared factor that needs to fit into our equation uh, where nu is the Poisson's ratio. Now if you think about it, nu is equal to what, about a third uh, for pipeline steel, so 1 minus 2 nu is going to be 1 minus 2 thirds equals to 1 third and 1 third squared is 1 ninth. So that's basically going to tell us that uh, the, the difference in apparent toughness between plane stress and plane strain conditions is going to be about nine times. So let's go back to our original plot here. We've got the NG18 equation, Sharpie over area. We've got our Wallen. We've got our Rolf Novak. Let's hypothetically say, just, just playing with the numbers, let's hypothetically say that those NG18 Sharpie over area correlations were done under plane stress conditions. And we want to convert, confer, uh, convert those into plain strain conditions, which would be theoretically more correct. What we would need to do is to take those values and multiply them all by 1 minus 2 nu squared. So multiply them by 1 ninth. Bang. Now that game that we had before of one of these things is not like the other is really not, not quite so easy to play. We can also flip things the other way. Let's pretend that the uh, let's pretend that we want the Wallen J and the Rolf Novak correlations to be done under plain stress conditions. In that case, we divide through by one minus two nu squared, and well, everything lines up mostly. Now, if you've seen video number three, or or you're familiar with some of my other work, I've I've developed a new model called the gamma exponent model, um, which is used to look at surface crack assessments. Um, in, in pipeline materials. I'm looking at how much how much uh, pressure can a surface crack handle before everything goes kablooey. And if you look at the fine print in the model I've developed, I specify the Wallen J lower bound 5%. So that's going to mean that we're going to go back to our Wallen J correlation from API 579 and we're going to pick out the lower bound coefficient which changes things. Now if we plot that, here we have Sharpie over area compared to the wall and lower 5%. We look like this. Let's do that conversion factor all over again. Bang. Or we can flip it the other way. Bang. Now, this basically makes me think that the Sharpie over area correlations that were done 50 years ago were very likely, based on this analysis, um, to be done under plain stress conditions. Um, unfortunately, the correlation is currently being used uh, for surface cracks used in the original log secant model, the modified log secant model, and, and also the CoreLAS model. My personal feeling is that 
that the correlation should not be used for cracks under plain strain conditions, but somehow it seems to be. This might not seem to be super duper important, but if you've seen video number three, where I talk a little bit about the log secant model, and if you go ahead to uh, video number five, which you probably haven't got to yet, this turns out to be a very, very important thing. So, hmm, is that possible? Is it possible that the oil and gas industry has been using um, a toughness correlation for the last 50 years that is, um, strictly speaking, not technically correct? That would, uh, that would be kind of a worrying thing. The oil and gas industry is valued at something like $3 trillion, which is comparable to the GDP of India and, and, and Britain and France. There's something like 2 million kilometers of transmission pipelines around the world when you include both the onshore and offshore lines. That's enough to wrap around the world 50 times. We've got laterals to think about. We've got distribution lines. We've got various uh, facilities piping. It seems to me to be uh, something that we want to have a good hard think about. Are we using an appropriate toughness value under these conditions? We may see that the validation has appeared to work so far, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's technically correct. If you jump ahead to video number five, um, hopefully it will be clear um, after watching that video why, um, why I'm so concerned about this. Disclaimer. Usually uh, YouTube videos will have a disclaimer saying that this was done by professionals. Do not try this at home, but if you've seen my other videos, you know I'm not going to do that to you. Please do try this at home. Look at those toughness correlations, plot the data for yourself, play around with the Poisson ratio, and see if you can get the same sort of behavior that I can. And if you can, have a good hard think about were those Sharpie over area correlations done under inappropriate conditions? Um, that's something to chew on. If you find out that, uh, that that's the case and come to the same conclusion I do, then, then maybe that might convince you that I'm, I'm not a crazy person here. And that's important because video number five, um, video number five relies on this conclusion that I've come to. If you're interested in some of the stuff I've been talking about in these various videos, uh, please take a look at the publications I have. Um, it'll give you a little bit more theory and a little bit more logic, I hope, behind my thought process in some cases. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for your time. I hope you found something to think about. I hope you followed my logic, and I hope that you'll look at this video in context of, of videos number three and number five to see why I'm so concerned about this. And until next time, thank you very much. Bye.